So guys, tune into the show. Don't miss it because it's going to be an amazing show. You are going to be touched. You're going to be amazed. You're going to be excited. It's Thursday, 11 o'clock on a Thursday. The Message Talk Show with Alex Gordon. Yes, don't miss it. Good morning, folks. Good morning. And this is Alex Gordon, your host on the Message Talk Show. Guys, good morning to you. Thursday is an amazing day, as I always say. It's the greatest day of the week. Why is it the greatest day of the week? Because you have found the time to tune into the Message Talk Show. So here we go. Call your friends. Call your enemies. Call everybody you know and get them on the Message Talk Show. Okay? Call them now. Call them and get yourself a cup of coffee. Get yourself a glass of water because I don't want you moving away because today we have a special guest on the show, an amazing guest. So I don't want you moving away from the screen today. Now, also, what I'd like you to do is just close the door. All right. Remove all distractions from around you. OK, because when you do that, you will give this 100 percent of your time for 30 minutes. So welcome to the message talk show today. You know what? I've often said this, the last 24 months has been the most difficult of our lives, most difficult of our lives. A lot of us have had some very terrible news. A lot of us have suffered people being sick, people dying. Some, we've, the economy has been in turmoil. And through it all, we've had to learn to live in a different way. The word pivot was used heavily in 2020. And now in 2022, we're still pivoting. And there is no concept of norm in terms of what you knew pre-2020. Now we have a remodeled norm by which we're going to operate, but we have to learn to live and survive in the economy in which that's been created. So today we have on the show today a very special guest who we're going to be talking about how to fight back in challenging times. And so we have on the a show today a very, a very serious entrepreneur. Yes, a very serious entrepreneur, a, a, a very successful entrepreneur, a guy who's been on a mission for the past 10 to 13 years of his life to help change people's lives. And so, folks, let me introduce you to you, no other than Stephen Jen Steve Jenkins. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? Doing great. Thanks, Alex. How are you doing? I am I I am blessed today. I am I I woke up this morning as I normally say. I woke up. So because I woke up, I can change everything else. I don't have to worry about anything else because I woke up. And that's Every just being ground. grateful. Yeah. Sorry? Every day above ground is a good day. <laughs> Every day above ground is a good day. So, you know, I, I was saying this earlier, how to how to fight back in challenging times. Past 24 months we've been through I think we've been to hell and back. Some people are still in hell, but whether you're religious or not, we've been through some tough times. And because of tough times, there's a generation that all they have seen is what's happened in the last two years. They've not seen anything further back. And so, Steve, today we're going to talk about fighting back, you know, in challenging times. But let's go back in time and, and, and look back as to where, where, when did we ever have to, when did we ever suffer in such what we call recession terms. Yeah, re recession. When was the, what recessions can you remember in your lifetime? Well, uh, the first one was a very significant one in my lifetime uh, back in the uh, late 1970s, would you believe? There are probably some people listening today that are like, man, that was in the previous century. Uh, and yeah, it was. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I lived in uh, uh, an area of the country known as South Wales. and um, uh, at that particular time, uh, the predominantly, the, I think it was something like 30%, maybe 40% of the workforce in the UK worked as a civil servant. So where I lived, that would be miners, um, I guess coal miners, shipyard workers, and steel workers. And uh, literally, the, you know, the area um, and the major towns of Cardiff, Newport, and Swansea were decimated with, uh, with unemployment. And uh, the town I lived in, uh, had eighty percent unemployment, and wow. uh, it was it was tough. We uh, we went we went without food, electricity, water. Um, it was really really uh, it was really tough. And something if people want to research the time and be a bit 
geeky about it. 1979 was when the, the miners went on strike and basically the whole country ground to a halt and uh, uh, it coincided with one of the coldest winters uh, there ever was, um, you know, minus 20 degrees um, uh, for a, like a, a week or two week uh, period. And they called it the winter of discontent. Um, wow. So, yeah, it was a, uh, so that's, that shaped my future, to be honest. Um, and I, so I think sometimes a recession is almost like a, a, a fresh start or a little bit like uh, restarting your computer, you know, um, resetting everything. It's a reboot. Now, that's definitely true. It is definitely, I, I mean, I was very young at that time and I can remember, you know, that term, the winter of discontent, because even in schools after that, we were talking about the winter of discontent, um, strikes across the country. You know, it was a very serious time. But, yeah. and we survived. Now, looking back for the last 24 months, how have you seen the last 24 months in terms of what you do? How has that affected you? Well, <clears throat> I think you've brought up a fantastic um, subject here because I haven't even thought about it. I'm thinking about this uh, as I'm going through. And, and really the great thing about uh, us human beings is, is, is that we have, uh, a, we have an ability that the rest of the animal kingdom doesn't have, and that is to be adaptable. We can adapt. So I remember also 1987, the first year that I, I kind of started as an entrepreneur at 22 years of age. I joined the financial industry uh, in the June, June the 10th, 1987. And on October the 15th, Black Monday occurred, as they called it, which was the stock market crash. Um, and literally, people thought the world was over. Um, uh, you know, that was it. It was game up. Uh, there, were, there, were, there were people taking their own life in the financial sector. Wow. Uh, people packing their bags and moving to you know, the other side of the world. It, game over. The financial industry is finished. And uh, but but we adapted, you know, and uh, when I look at the last two years, um, you know, my business model has, has changed completely. Um, you know, I'm, my business model is a different, uh, different. It's, it's the same end product, but it's, the, it's a different business to what it was two years ago because we we adapted. Um, uh, we, had, we, we adapted to the change. You see, the one thing that's never going to change is that there is change. There's always be change. We have to adapt to it. But do you know, if we had a discussion about making changes and changing the way we operate, we would sp we'd probably spend the next two years debating that we can't make those changes. That's right. isn't, that, isn't, that, isn't that amazing? We'd probably, we'd probably spend a lot of time talking about how we can't do something, but then when something is forced upon us and we have no alternative, we yeah. do it. Why, why do you think that is? Well, it's mindset, isn't it? I mean, no one likes change. I mean, um, look, look at a um, look at a young toddler who starts teething. Their teeth are changing. That is painful, right? Look at a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. Yeah, that's change. And that, I don't know, but it must be painful for someone to go through that. You know, obviously, birth, giving birth is painful. That's change. So change is painful. So it's natural and normal not to like uh, change and, and resist it. I mean, I, I'm the world's worst. Um, I, I know that. I, I just I love being in, in a zone and just doing the same thing time and time again, kind of have a system in place. And then something comes along and turns it upside down and you kind of go, oh, I don't like change. And we stamp our feet and we have a little bit of a paddy. Uh, but then all of a sudden we have to realize that we have to adapt and that's what makes us special as people we, we have the ability to adapt because we have a brain to work things out um i always love the phrase when i used to take a problem to one of my mentors many years ago he always used to say steve you're a smart guy you can work this out <laughs> that's a great opening line <laughs> <laughs> he used to annoy the heck out of me. But what he was doing is he was teaching me to think for myself. And, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, so, and I do it with my kids as well, you know, when they come to me, Dad, you know, I need to sort this out. How do I work this out? You're a smart guy. Go and work it out. <laughs> I think I'll borrow that from you, Steve. I think I will borrow that. You're a smart guy. You're a smart guy. You can work this out for yourself. Otherwise, hey. they become dependent on you, aren't they? And what you're trying to do is to help people become independent. 
That's true. That's so true. Guys, I don't know where you're joining us from this morning. Today, Thursday, the 20th of January, we're talking today about how to fight back in challenging times with Steve Jenkins, entrepreneur. It's amazing. It's amazing how the human psyche can make changes that we have to make when we have to do it. And sometimes we don't even understand ourselves that we can make these changes. And if we deliberate about it, we won't make the change. But forced upon us, we just do it just like that. So that's what we're talking about today. So call your friends, call your enemies, get them on the phone and say, listen to this special broadcast today about how to fight back in challenging times. So Steve, when we use the word fight back, no, no, no. I think I phrased it like, do you have the stamina like a champion? Mm. I, I phrased it like, do you have a, a stamina like a champion? How would you define a champion in this time, Steve? Well, I, I don't think it's any different to any time. I think um, there's that famous uh, uh, Rocky Balboa moment where he's speaking to his son and uh, he, says, he says something along the lines of, <clears throat> what defines character is not how many times you get hit down, but how many times you actually get back up. And and, you know, it's natural and normal to kind of say to yourself, oh, do I have to keep keep getting back up? You do until the day you die. I mean, I, every single human being I've ever met has got a challenge in front of them, whether they're 18 years of age or, you know, 88 years of age. That, that's just that's just a fact of life that we can't shy away from. Um, you know, if you want to meet some people that, that, that haven't got challenges, um, you need to go to, to a graveyard. There's... <laughs> <laughs> they're unchallenged. Um, every day is a challenge, but uh, your mindset and your attitude towards the daily challenges and life challenges is, is what defines. I'm a firm believer that in most cases, whatever happens to you is actually irrelevant. It's how you handle what happens to you is really relevant because that defines who you are. It's easy to, to look good during good times, um, but it's, it's how you handle the tough times which actually defines who you are. Wow. Did you hear that, guys? It's easy to look good in the good times, but it's the challenge time. It's the challenging times that really define you, guys. You hear, you hear that? And sometimes we, we, we want to run from challenges. We want to run from challenges. Our innate ability is to run from a challenge. We've never done this before. I can't do this. How many times have you heard people say, I can't do this, Steve? Oh, every day, mate. Every day. And, you know... <clears throat> If you speak to my four sons, uh, they're not allowed to say uh, uh, the word can't. You know, we call it the C word. And uh, it's, it, it, you know, my kids even play games. They ring me up and say, do you know what? I heard uh, George saying um, uh, can't the other day. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just banned in our home. You just cannot wow. say the word. Ban the word I can't from your, from your vocabulary. There is no such thing as I can't. But here we are today talking about how to fight back. So, Steve, how would you suggest that people start to? How would you suggest that people start to make this possible? Fighting back. Well, that, that's a fantastic question, and uh, it, it's not a very palatable answer because most people I, I've noticed want a magic pill, a quick. In, in the era of fast food, you know, the era of social media where you get fast results through Google. You know, the, the, I want it now. I want it now. I want it now. And if I can't have it now, I'm going to go and sulk. Yeah. <clears throat> so my answer is is probably a little bit old fashioned. But <clears throat> if you first of all, what you need to do is you need to define what your purpose is. That's the number one goal. You, you've got to work out exactly what you want to do, what you want to have and who you want to be. And that's tough. That is that it that it that doesn't happen you know, in a split second. You've got to work on that as an ongoing process. Steve, it takes people sometimes 20, 30 years to work out what their purpose is, Steve. Oh, yeah. Well, look at um, uh, the colonel who invented the KFC. He was 65 when wow. he, you know, he's 65 when he discovered, you know, the recipe for um, KFC. So, <clears throat> but you, you cannot deny that. You know, you have you have to work out what your purpose is. And that could be a God moment where everything that you've realized comes to a point in time. It could be a it could be just be a normal realization. It could be you're in the right place at the right time. So many successful people, if you read their books, that phrase appears. They're in the right place at the right time. <clears throat> but instead of standing there waiting for the God moment, waiting to 
to be, I know if I stand right here, I should be in the right place at the right time. None of that garbage works. <laughs> what I did in my uh, 20s is I used to spend three hours every Sunday morning um, from six o'clock till nine o'clock because that's when my kids were asleep um, and they didn't distract me. I spent three hours asking those three questions. What do I want to do? What do I want to have? And who do I want to be? And the great thing is, is I'm a smart guy. You're a smart guy. If we ask ourselves questions, we're going to, our brain, our computer between our two ears is going to find the answers. And uh, we, we, we doing life gets in the way to the big questions you've got to get answered about yourself. So if you do the work, spend time asking yourself. I used to have a notebook and, and I still do it today, you know, because you're always redefining it. You're always kind yeah. of improving it. And sometimes you go on a journey and you go, whoa, I'm over here now. I'm, I'm, I'm gone. There's a fork in the road. I'm now going down it. That happens to many people. So you've got to keep asking yourself those questions and redefining uh, uh, who you are, what you want to be and what you want to have. And um, once you've got your purpose, it, it actually becomes uh, your eight. That's 80 percent of the battle, because whatever challenges are then thrown at you, uh, your mindset is I'll go around it, I'll go over it, I'll go under it, I'll go through it. Whereas if you, it's a little bit like when you get in your car, if you don't plug in, you know, the coordinates into your sat nav and you just start driving around the M25 all day, then you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's what most people do. They drive around in circles. I remember in the early days of the sat nav that there's stories out there of people punching in information to the sat nav and ended up somewhere completely different or oh, yeah. ending up to a dead end road because the sat nav's not being updated. I so what that. you're what you're saying that we, we need to we need to somehow re recalibrate and reset our own personal sat navs in our minds, in our hearts. That's right. But the hardest thing, the hardest thing about asking yourself questions is sometimes spending the time just to get the answers because as you said, life sets in, you're busy, you're doing this, you're doing that. You, you know, you, you've got family, whether you've got family or not, you've got, you're at work, you're doing this. And so because of that, you're, 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 you, you tend to, to somehow sit where you are in the comfort zone and say, right, it can't be harder than this. Let's, let me just stay here for a while. Why is the comfort zone such a, a comfortable place to be? Because, because, because it's comfortable. I mean, it's enjoyable, isn't it? I mean, you know, no one enjoys um, more than me sitting in front of a TV watching a movie with some hot popcorn, and uh, and that's fine. Um, but do it on purpose. So for me, I enjoy that, but I'm going to do that and combine it with family time, or combine it with friends time, combine it with you know. So so it's it's a purposeful, planned thing to do. Um, you know, I grew up um, in, if I remember, we didn't have a TV when I was younger. I remember I was about 12 years of age when we first got a TV. And wow. it was, and then every single night for the rest of my uh, teenage years um, that I lived in my family home, we sat with our dinner on our lap in front of the TV. It was like we were robots. It was like we were conditioned that that's what it, and it was a novelty to start with, but then the habit set in, which is yeah. So we didn't do it on purpose. We, we did it initially on purpose, and then we did it as a habit. And, uh, and, and then I, I, I remember when I got my own place, uh, when I was about 22 after I left college, and uh, the first thing I thought about, I've got to get a TV because I've got to sit in front of this TV. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, I got out of that somehow. Um, actually, I got out of it when, um, when, I, very, uh, when I first uh, got taught how to, to, to set and achieve uh, goals. Um, and, uh, you know, I read a book called um, uh, uh, How to Raise Your Salary, which is rebranded now. It's a Napoleon Hill book. It's now rebranded as uh, the, the um, uh, philosophy of Andrew Carnegie or something along those lines. Um, yeah, wow. which is a fantastic book to read. And it teaches wow. you how to set and achieve goals. But then I've what listened, is, I've listened sorry, to you speak several times. And one of the things that you, I've heard you talk about a lot is is having this CCMP, this mm. CCMP. Yeah. Why do you think that's so important, especially now? Well, I would say it's important in the past, now, and whatever is thrown at you in the future, it'll always be important. Because if, if you've got a clear, concise mental picture, which is what CCMP stands for, for short, which is from the book I've just mentioned, that's the, uh, the guy who invented it, uh, was uh, 
Napoleon Hill or Andrew Carnegie, an interview with Andrew Carnegie by Napoleon Hill. He, he refers to that in the very first uh, chapter. And, and he basically says that 95% of people are, are aimless. 95% of people just do the minimum they have to do in order to, um, to get by. Whereas 5% of people have that, that, that kind of purpose in life, that picture in their head of exactly where they're going to end up. If you watch um, athletes, so, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the famous, um, you know, sprinters, yeah. they visualize themselves actually uh, running the number of steps it takes to, to kind of win a gold medal. Football players, the night before a game, are trained nowadays. They are trained to, to run a movie in their mind of scoring a goal or saving a penalty or whatever their position is. Wow. And 10, 20 years ago, that was kind of like, well, this is cuckoo, right? But but now it, now it's mainstream visualizing. And you can prove it. Everyone does it without knowing it anyway. How many times, Alex, have you said, you know what? <clears throat> I think I've got a cold coming on. <laughs> when you say that, you now visualize yourself. Going, oh. Wow. <clears throat> and now all of a sudden, your belief is that you've got a cold coming on. And you're working real hard behind the scenes to make sure that cold happens. Because mm -hmm. you've put the thing in your head and you've visualized it, and now your body will follow suit. That's and unbelievable. I never really thought of it like that, that I could actually bring on a cold by virtue of just saying it to myself, I feel like I'm going to have a cold. Think, act, believe, and become is something I was taught 30-odd years ago uh, by one of my very first mentors. Now, say, that, say that again. Say that again. That, that is powerful. Say that sentence think, again. You think, therefore you act, therefore you believe, and therefore you become. And that's both negatively and positively. Yeah, you can think something negative and you end up in that situation. Think something positive and, uh, you know, you can end up in that situation also. And if you've got that clear, concise mental picture, your subconscious brain, the, the computer between your ears is walking. Have you ever had a situation, Alex, where you have wanted something so badly? So a car is a really good example. And you... All of a sudden, you start seeing the car in the <laughs> color that you want, in the in the model that you want, and it just. Why is that? It's because your brain is now uh, is is in tune with that. It's trying to find it. It's seeking it out. It's w looking for it. And when you see, you see, it's everywhere because your brain believes you're going to get it. Whereas wow. if you weren't thinking of that car, if you if it wasn't a CCMP, if it wasn't a goal in your head. Your your subconscious would filter it out. You wouldn't even know the cars are there. The cars are there, but you wouldn't you wouldn't see them. So the brain is a very very powerful thing, and uh, all you've got to do is you're a smart guy. You can work this out, <laughs> okay? You can work this out because if you if you read the great stories by people like Thomas Edison, the greatest sports people, uh, or read all their autobiographies, they've all got a common thread, and that common thread is that. They, they visualize their future before it actually happens. Wow. Hey, folks, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you got this. I don't know if you've written this down. You, you should have written this one sentence down, guys. You need to feed your mind. You need to CCMP. You need to run your own movie in your head. Run the movie for where you're going. CCMP is the key. So now, Steve, you've got your fan club coming up here because here's a lady saying, Tyre says, you've got to work out your purpose. Whoever you are, whatever your age, you got to do it. There's no such thing as the word can't. You got a fan club out there, Steve. Wow, they're coming through. <laughs> that makes me feel weird. <laughs> well, <laughs> this morning you said you don't use social media, but hey, look here, man. People are people are following you somehow. So yeah. let me ask you this question now. What's one of the the biggest goals that you ever set for yourself? Oh, without doubt, uh, the first, uh, um, do you mean, well, there's a few really, um, but the, the one that came into my head uh, was, uh, uh, was something I did uh, recently, which is learn to swim. So when I was a young teenager, the first ever holiday uh, my family and I had abroad, we went to Benidorm, can you believe that, uh, on a package holiday where the packaging company went bust. And uh, 
and we got straight anyway it's another story but i had a uh, i had an incident in the swimming pool where where i almost drowned and um so i've been very fearful of water for uh, for most of my life and uh two years ago uh, as the pandemic kind of started to hit i reassessed my goals and i said one of the things i'm going to learn to do is i'm going to learn to swim properly. now i could swim to be fair i could i could do a length so uh, so I, I decided, no, I'm going to learn to swim without fear. And uh, now I can do, uh, I can swim miles. And, uh, I would, and, and it kind of links into the question you had earlier, if I can continue on that theme, in that, um, you know, you think about swimming uh, and you then start acting like, so I get the goggles, I get, you know, I get, I get all the gear and uh, I organize myself to, to get to the pool. And um, all of a sudden now I'm visualizing myself doing it. And uh, the first time next that I did it, I, um, I swam one and a half lengths and I thought wow. I was going to die. Um, I, my lungs were <laughs> bursting and I actually, um, <clears throat> I actually uh, uh, fell asleep on the sofa that afternoon and, uh, and missed, you know, half a day. And my body was just, you know, kind of reacting to that. You were shattered. And a couple of days later, uh, I kind of had recovered and uh, I went and did it again. And I actually did two lengths. And I can clearly remember this, uh, you know, getting out of the pool after two lengths. And I felt OK. I didn't sleep that afternoon. And I was just I was just so uh, excited that I could do two lengths. Uh, and then, the, you know, the next time I went three or four days later, I got it up to three and then five and then 10 and then 20. And it just grew. Now I can do 100 lengths in 50 minutes. Wow. So, um, now, there's, All because you kept seeing yourself doing it. Part well, no, because there's a pe another piece of the equation that I haven't gone through yet, and that next piece is um, I love the phrase. I don't know where I got it from, but consistent action causes compounding. Okay. Okay. So what happened there is my results compounded. They didn't go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, one extra length every time. It was one, two, four, eight. I went from eight to twenty. You know, it was wow. just amazing. The, the consistent action causes compounding. So, you know, if I could may wave a magic wand for everybody, you know, that I know that I care about and love, it would be this this concept of work ethic. Yeah, most people haven't got a work ethic, uh, and, and and therefore, if they if they're kind of working hard for a couple of hours and take the rest of the day off, or if they're working, they do one day, two days, and then it, it you know, you need consistent action. And because that's what causes compounding, you know, it just it, it's just you just can't avoid it. And, and what I did is I did consistent action of swimming three to four times a week, every week without fail. Uh, even when I, I traveled, um, I made sure I was uh, there was a swimming pool near this meeting I had to do. And uh, I, um, you know, I still did uh, did my lengths. And 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 the, the thing with that is if you've got a work ethic that's consistent and it, it starts to compound in every single area of your life um, has an impact because that, that discipline that you've now put in seeps into every single facet of your life. So, wow. you know, I've challenged with my weight, as you know, Alex, all my life. Okay. I mean, I see a pizza advert and I'm, you know, I'm <laughs> pressing the buttons and there's one within 40 minutes, you know, um, you know, and that's because they're advertising to my subconscious brain and my brain goes, I need pizza. All right. So I have to fight that. And if, but if I can go six months without a pizza uh, and other junk food, I know that um, that consistent action compounds. And, you know, you remember me three years ago. I was uh, I was a little heavier than I am now. <laughs> so you are a smart guy that worked it out for yourself. <laughs> I like to think so, but uh, yeah. And that whole compound compounding thing, because you know sometimes we we overlook these things, and and, and because we overlook it, we we take we 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 treat it too simple about compounding. Because if 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 consistent action allows you to compound, that means what you can achieve in a short space of time is exponential, like you've never seen before. Yeah, yeah. But in order to get there, you've got to be every day. Yeah. You do. It needs to become uh, a way of life. Um, you know, diets don't work. We know that because when you go on a diet, you eventually come off that diet and then you revert back to where you were. So instead of saying I'm going on a diet, 
<clears throat> I'm changing. I'm going to have a way of life. Yeah, you know, you're going to you're going to completely change your food intake and exercise output for the rest of your life. That's the only way it can work. Otherwise, you'll just relapse back. It's like 95% of businesses fail in their first year. Do you know why that is? Because the goal <clears throat> was to set up a business. Well, once setting up a business is doomed to fail because that's the wrong goal, isn't it? The goal should be to, to have a successful business making profits for me and my family. Whereas most people go, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set up a business, and set up a business and that's it. They've done it, they've achieved their goal. It hasn't made any money, but-, but Well, but, 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 then, but, but then even, even the systems that we have, when, when they talk about starting your own business, they don't, the word, the, the word, the, the words they use is always, why don't you start, you haven't got a job, you're unemployed, why don't you start your own business? Yeah. And it yeah. stops there. That's right. Because they've achieved their goal. So your subconscious brain goes, I've done it. I've achieved now. I can stop now. I can relax. I've done it. I've started a business. <clears throat> that, um, that's, that's I'm just it. feeding in your comments from your fan club again, from your fan club about working out. You, you've got some coming up here. Yes. <laughs> Okay, we've seen that one. So we need to, we need to recalibrate. Oh, we need to cal recalibrate. I like that word. Our sat nav. Mm. That is so important about recalibrating. Now, one question I have here is that why are goals and dreams it's a large feature in what you talk about? Well, <clears throat> the practical answer to that is that in 1987, when I first Kind of got subject you know kind of uh, influenced by someone um i remember thinking wow and and i i, I kind of I, we all do it anyway i mean you take most people use an alarm clock to get up in the morning that all that is is you setting a goal using a tool to help you achieve it and uh, and you get out of bed to turn the alarm clock you know and um i don't know about you if i have to get up early to catch a plane or something you know i put the alarm on the other side of the room you know because i know that there's a challenge happening when that alarm goes off at five o'clock in the morning because I can press a button and go 10 more minutes and then press a button another 10 more minutes and press a button and then it's all but it's the other side of the room it actually <laughs> achieves the goal I get out of bed and then yeah. you know you can get back in are you or less likely to anyway so uh, and I remember at 14 years of age um I was uh, um I used to have to do obviously work at that age to su um, support the family I was on a bicycle riding up a very very steep hill with over a hundred uh, newspapers on my back because i had a newspaper round i used to sell um uh, news you know i've told you about this before where i used to sell newspapers uh, to make some money uh for the family and uh i can remember visualizing not on purpose just going because it was freezing cold it was so cold it was raining i was miserable and i, I was like oh, one day i'm going to drive up this hill uh in a uh, in a red sports car wow. uh, and uh uh and i did it and the funny thing was is i'd forgotten about that until i actually coincidentally rode up that uh drove up that hill in in, in a sports car i had when i was about 23 24. now you could say that that was a coincidence or you could say my subconscious brain yes. made it happen who knows i yeah, mean you you, you you fed it into your subconscious mind yeah and i genuinely forgot about it Wow. That's I achieved it. So, um, you know, th that's why goals and dreams are important, because wh whatever image you put onto your uh, onto your subconscious mind, um, the subconscious mind hasn't got a, a, a filter. Yeah, it'll, it'll believe whatever you tell it. OK, there's if you want to read more about it, there's something called um, a reticular activating system, which is a two inch piece of cerebral um, cells that's kind of at the back of your neck here, which filters. So when you're driving a car and you're trying to overtake someone, you see something coming the other way, and this filters, that, that allows the, the word danger to come into your head and kind of swerve back, okay? If you remove that uh, uh, rack, uh, RAS, as they call it, you'll, you'll keep going because you believe you're going to get around there. But if you can, so therefore your brain, my brain, everyone's brain says it's impossible to be successful. Yeah, it, you can't you can't set a goal to that's audacious and, and achieve it. That's not possible. So your RAS is preventing you believe that. But there are methods and techniques where you can relax that um, uh, uh, reactivating uh, system. Awesome. 
and you visualize and put it into the subconscious. It's like you're, you're opening the door and you just visualize those things, put them in there, and uh, then you close the door and you, you've got all that positivity in there now. You've got your goals and dreams in there. You're working. It's going. And that's what causes you to work when you, even when you don't feel like it. And you that know, will compound. That will compound as long as you do it every single day. Yeah. Wow. Turn it into a way of life. And now, uh, I've, I've got a question here from a lady called Sharon, and she's saying, is discipline as easy <laughs> as people make it? Well, it's, 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 there's a word change there. It, 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 it's simple. It's not easy. All right. It's simple to do, but it isn't easy. And, the, it, and it isn't easy because a, the human being is not naturally, none of us are naturally disciplined. You know, you know, you look at someone like Steve Redgrave, who won uh, eight Olympic gold medals. He trained on Christmas Day, apparently. Yeah. Wow. One of my most successful people, uh, a lady, she she was she I rang, I rang her to wish her happy birthday uh, one Christmas Day about 10 years ago. She said, oh, I'm with a client right now. I said, it's Christmas Day. What are you doing with a client? You know, <laughs> so wow. you know, it's, it's, it's not easy, but it is simple to do. And if it's simple to do, anyone can do it. And what wow. that really does boil down to, it boils down to how badly you want it. So wow. when you, you, Alex, think of something right now. And Sharon, think of something right now that you so badly wanted it. You didn't know how to achieve it, but you did it anyway. Wow. Yeah. Everyone's got an example of that in their life, haven't they? Yeah. 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 We were talking about, you know, one of my stories where, where that happened earlier today. So. <clears throat> Everyone's got their own story of when they wanted something so badly, they had no clue how to do it, but they did it anyway. Okay. So <clears throat> that's what you've got to work on. You've got to work on exactly what you want to have, what you want to be, and what you want to do. When you get that bit, your brain will work out the rest. Wow. With consistent action. The consistent action comes as a result of having a clear, concise mental picture. If you've got no clear, concise, see, Otherwise, you, you're just driving around the M25 all day. Yeah, you, you're not. You're not going to an exact location. Yeah. You know, I've I've done that myself. You know, drive around the M25 and couldn't find out where I was going. <laughs> when they first built it, I went around it for fun. <laughs> we have cameras back. Then. Hey, a lot of late, folks. I don't know where you, you're you're listening from today. We today we've been talking about how to fight back, how to fight back. In challenging times and when we're talking about fighting back one of the conclusions we, we're coming to is that our mind holds the key to everything that we want to do everything that we want to become and everything that we want to have and according to steve all you have to do is develop a ccmp what is a ccmp it's a clear concise mental picture now steve says discipline is easy but you've got to make it simple and guys, sometimes we are the biggest hindrance to the dreams and the visions that we have ourselves because we don't keep it simple. Remember that terminology called KISS, Steve, many years ago? Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. Mm. Now, guys, I, I, I'm hoping today that you've taken plenty of notes because if you've not taken the notes, then you can get the replay of today of how to fight back during challenging times, because it's important for you and I to work out ways and strategies that we fight back and that we get back and that we work towards the goals and the dreams that we're having in our lives. What was the book that you recommended again, Steve? So uh, written by Napoleon Hill, he's more famous for the book Think and Grow Rich, but there's a better book that is not so well known called The Wisdom, that's what it's called, The Wisdom of Andrew Carnegie. Wow. Now, I'm rolling up now, Steve, and I think you've answered this, but do you think everyone has the same power to change their life, to fight back? What do you think my answer is? I know. <laughs> Listen, it's all about mindset. I'll give you a, a quick um, true story. Uh, that, um, I had two guys that worked for me on a part-time basis um, about 10 years ago. <clears throat> and uh, it was the beginning of the year, and uh, one of them said to me, 
uh, <clears throat> Steve, I'm not going to be able to do much in my spare. I'm not going to have much spare time because it's January. And uh, um, this guy sold furniture for a living. And he said, this is my busiest month of the year. 60, 70 percent of the, the work we do in the shop that I work in comes in. So I'm just not going to have much time to work, um, you know, in my part time position with you. And I said, uh, fine. And then another guy that sold beds <clears throat> said to me, uh, this is going to be the best time working part time you have ever known because more people come into my shop than I've ever than I'm ever going to have all year. This is where we sell 60 to 70 percent of our beds during the January sales. So you've got the same scenario, wow. two, two different mindsets, two different mindsets. The glass is either half empty or half full. We all know that cliche, but oh. it's very, very true. Steve, pause there, Steve. Pause there, Steve. The glass is either half empty or half full. Which are you, a half empty person or a half full person? Now answer that question when I come back from our sponsor. You are listening to The Message Talk Show and Podcast. Do you believe you have something to share? Do you believe you have something to contribute? Do you have a story to tell the world, to share with your community? Gandhi said, man often becomes what he believes himself to be. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. So join us on the Message Talk Show and Podcast with host Alex Gordon. Steve, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. There's so many gems here. There's so many gems that you're really pushing out, pulling out, just to remind people how simple it is to, to get ourselves in, the, to change our mindsets. Very simple, but some, sometimes we're looking for, we're looking for some, for some really sophisticated method to, 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 to deliver us. Now, I remember you saying this before, that you are lucky because of your work rate. Now, I paused when you told me that the first time. You said no one can get past your work rate, and it's because of your work rate why you are lucky. Now, we've always defined luck as in something that doesn't require any work at all. Why do you define luck with work? Well, uh, I heard an acronym once. It's like a bit, again, another little cliche that luck really is an acronym for, for um, uh, God, I've forgotten it. Uh, it is under constructive knowledge so it's basically luck comes from activity so give you an example if you uh, if you bought one lottery ticket the odds aren't good okay labor under constructive knowledge that's it if you uh, if you buy one lottery ticket the odds aren't good apparently um it's it's uh, easier for me to guess your mobile phone number than it is to win the lottery the odds are better but if you bought a thousand tickets then obviously you're, you've got more chance of winning the lottery. So if whatever business you're in, if you market your business to one potential customer, then that's not going to be anywhere near. You're not going to, you're not, you're going to be a lot more lucky if you market your product to a thousand customers. So luck is labor under constructed knowledge and the knowledge that most people don't have that it isn't about Quality is important. We live in a world where the minimum standard for everybody now is world class. OK, mm. and we're all hung up on that to a degree because, <clears throat> yes, you can be world class. You can have uh, I remember investing some money in this amazing product once called a bath filler. Right. You, you, you attached it to the tap and you set a temperature. You turn the tap on. You could walk away and the bath filled to a certain level and then it turned the tap off at the temperature wow. that you like. Now, you'd think that would make millions, wouldn't you? <laughs> and, 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 I, and I did too. <laughs> That's why I put some money into it. But it didn't sell. Not Because great ideas don't necessarily sell. It's a, it, it, There's more to it than that. There's the cost of the product, putting it together, the profit margin, what people are meant to pay for. So th there's all that kind of, those kind of issues. So it isn't, it isn't about the quality. Quality is important. But I can tell you right now, quantity is way more important because when you've got quantity going, the quality starts to upgrade anyway. Wow. So it's not one minute, isn't it? You said quality is important, but it's not better than quantity? The qu quality is more important. So quality, quality is more sorry, important. Qu quality is important, but quantity is, is more important. So you've wow. got this fine balance of working hard on developing your product to be the best product in the world. Is it, Great, I've got the best product in the world. I, I thought I had the best product in the world with this bath filler. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
you've got to you and some of that some really really poor products make a lot of money right so and i'm not suggesting you should go out and get a poor poor product but what i am suggesting is that there's a market for something and uh there's uh there's a need to fill that you know the need which is a market and you fill that need so the quantity of what you do is more more important than the quality but i'm not right. saying ignore quality but I'm saying focus on the quantity and work on the quality uh, alongside it. But uh, it makes fu make funny you should say that. Funny you should say that because I remember, I remember the early days of Microsoft when when Bill Gates came out with Microsoft and it, it started to hit the market. And I remember that when people complained about Microsoft because the, the, the product was good, but it had it was full of bugs. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. And what Microsoft did that every update, they would fix the last set of bugs that was reported. Yeah. But new ones would always come along. And they didn't withdraw the product at all. They just kept pushing it out, pushing it out, pushing it out, and upgrading, changing, upgrading. And look at it today. No one moans about Microsoft anymore. Products. That's right. You, you are so right. I never thought of it like that. That's, that it's is amazing. Like, it's like my swimming as well. It's like my swimming, yeah? When I did those first five lengths, was I concentrating on the quality of my stroke and how beautiful it looked? Or was I thinking about the quantity of lengths that I was doing? Yeah. yeah. yeah well, you... Quantity, right? Because with quantity, you get better at it anyway. Yes. Yeah, you, you develop a widget and you sell 10,000 of them. You're, during that process, you're going to go, oh, yeah, that would be better if I did that. And what if we did that? That would make it a little bit better. But if you're working on what? And you haven't sold one yet, and you and you you spend ten years making that perfect. The market's changed anyway. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah that's so true. The mindset thing: you've got to get volume going to get uh, the quality, um, uh, you know, improving. And yeah, it, it's it's it, it it doesn't feel natural to do it that way, wow. but it's the only way. Steve, this has been a pleasure talking to you today, and, I, and we're going to come to the close shortly. And I'm going to ask you to, you know, just just say what are the three most important things that you think people should take away from today. But before we go to Steve talking about that, I want you, the audience, to press the share button. Press the share button now. If you've received, if you've been impacted by what Steve has said today, press the share button. Put a comment in there and say how it's impacted you and what you're going to do with this information. Now, Steve. What would you say are the three most important things that people should walk away with today that they can use straight away? Well, the first one is uh, um, we spent the majority of the call talking about, it, and that is your purpose. Yeah, you've got you've got to have a purpose, an end game. You you must know exactly where you're going, um, which is a clear, concise mental picture of uh, who you are. Um, you know what you want to have and what you want to do. You know, in in what we call the seven the seven areas of your life, the seven Fs. You know, which is uh, family, uh, your faith, your um, friends, your family, your finances, your fitness and health and, uh, and fun. Fun's a big deal. There's been moment, times in my life where fun was missing and that impacts, that seeps into in a negative way into your life. So you've got to have a balanced life in all of those areas. However, there has to be a season where you're out of balance in order to get get a balanced life. Yeah. yeah you know, I see so many people trying to do too much, but it needs to be, you know, every now and again, there's a season where you're out of balance in order to get, um, get into balance. So once, if you can spend three hours a week asking yourself those questions about your purpose um, and developing plans and writing notes and putting your thoughts in, in place, you know, that's 80% of the battle. Um, and I know that 90% um, of people just don't do that. Um, they, life gets in the way. They haven't got the time. They're too busy. And, um, you know, they get to 65 years of age and uh, they get to retirement and, they, you know, they didn't succeed because they were too busy for 40 uh, working years. So uh, the, and the second thing would be once, once you really get into the mindset stuff and there's some fantastic books out there, I'd highly recommend Turbo Success by Ron Holland. Um, that's a fantastic tool. It's a difficult read. Um, uh, I wouldn't call it an enjoyable read, but the principles he teach allows you to unlock the power that you have uh, in your subconscious mind. And he gives you uh, exercises to do, which really, really help. Um, so uh, once you get into that, your belief level starts to, to rise. And 
and then and then the, the, you know so the belief is a big part and that's the mystical magical part if you like is is the belief levels because you've all woken up in the morning and gone um i'm in a bad mood and therefore your belief levels about what you can achieve are low but you by the by the reverse you've also woken up in the morning and gone you know i'm in a good mood today and you take on every challenge in front of you and you hit it and <clears throat> And this is where the discipline is, is, is being able to control your mindset. If you can control your mindset, and, and a little bit like my swimming story is every day, you know, kind of do one more lap, then that compounds. You work on your belief levels with your subconscious mind and you do that. You know, now all of a sudden, if you, if you want to become a 10 in terms of your belief, you can go, anyone can go from zero to 10 by consistently working on the, uh, that uh, subject area. And then the third and final thing really uh, is work rate. You know, you, you cannot avoid, there are no shortcuts in life to, to anything you want to be successful, for, successful with. You know, if, you're, if, if you have a, a, a marriage or a life partner, you know, you have to work at that every day, you know, and, and you do that and, and the joy and the wonder of all of that compounds. You know, if you, if you want to be fit and help, I mean, no one walks into a gym does nothing, walks out the other side, and they got, you know, abs. You and I are proof of that, Alex, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've know, you, you got to have that work rate. And, and, and if you do something consistently, it compounds. And it's the compounding effect that seems to be – and I'll give you a, a real good example um, of how compounding can work, and, and it kind of gives you a bit of a wow factor. Alex, if I was to give you a pound every day, and I'm not going to, so don't get excited. But if I was to give you a pound, and that pound doubled every single day, how many days would it take to get to a million pounds? You want me to sit here and work it out now, Steve? My, my, my brain, that's my brain. <laughs> well, guess, guess, have a guess. How many days? Doubles how many days? One, One, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. How many, more, how many days does it take to get to a million pounds? It's one pound, so what is doubling every day? So I don't know, but about 60 days? No, it's 20. Wow. There you go. I wow. said it's a wow factor, didn't I? Wow. Look, watch very quickly. One, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 120 something, 250 something, 500, 10 days. It's got to a thousand pounds. Okay. So it's going to go from a thousand to a million in 10 days. A thousand, two thousand, four thousand. 8,000, 16,000, 32,000, 64,000, 128,000, 256,000, wow. 512,000, 1 million. Boom, the curve does that. That's compounding. And wow. that's linked to every single area of your life. Oh, effort in on a daily basis. That compounding effect is linked to every area of your life. Fact. Whoa. Let's just pause. We need to just pause to digest that one. We just need to pause to digest that one because you can only receive it if your belief system receives into your subconscious mind that this is possible. This is amazing. Now, Steve, time's getting away again. And I, and I want to pull you. I, want, I don't want to go over the hour, but I need to ask you this one question that someone has pushed out here. And the question is, what one thing would you change? For me or for the people on the on for you, the for you, for you, for you. Is there anything you look back and think, is there one thing I would change or have I already made all the changes I need to have made? You know, it's a fantastic question and I wouldn't change anything. And, you know, I've had uh, tragedy in my life. I've had, you know, things go wrong and you kind of go, what if I'd have done this and what if I'd have done that? Um, you know, I remember, you know, if I go back, um, how long now? Uh, 15, 14, 15 years ago. Um, I, I had a seven bedroom house that I really, really liked. And uh, uh, I saw an opportunity to, you know, to kind of upgrade and, and, and it what didn't turn up to be an upgrade. I wish I'd kept that house. OK. But on the other hand, when, when there's this, every seed, every adversity has a seed of greatness within it. So if I'd have gone back, who knows what I wouldn't have then come across going forward. So you've got to celebrate as hard as it, as, as it is every single thing that goes wrong because that usually opens up a door for something good that happens. You know, you just you can't you can't live a life of regret because regret causes anxiety and anxiety damages your body. And because, you know, 
your your thoughts are things they are they are chemical things that go around your body so if you start thinking regret chemicals around your body are affecting your health which has a knock on effect to every other area of your life so um you i would not change a single thing everybody's journey is at times feels like hell on earth everybody's journey is meant to be challenging you can't have a testimony without a test you have to you you have the challenge is put in front of you for a reason it's to make the the uh the obstacle the other side the your sorry the, the the goal the other side feel like it was worth achieving it wouldn't be a goal it wouldn't be a clear concise mental picture if it was like yeah okay just turn up yeah got that that's not a goal a goal is needs to stretch you so you become a better person it develops your character and every single bit of adversity that you go through every single uh, uh you know hard knock that you take shapes your character to be able to handle things better in the future so i would not change a single single moment um of my life wow and i'm going to close on that one statement steve every seed of adversity has every, greatness every adversity has a seed of greatness every adversity has a seed of greatness now who says the 20 the last 24 months it, it, it's got adversity in it it's got everything gone wrong but in the last 24 months you've had time to think you have time to recalibrate time to change your mindset time to rethink and even today you've heard the information that you need today to change your belief system change your mindset and just get consistent with doing something that's going to compound and just think about it how long does it take for a pound to get two million, is that what you said? <laughs> two million, 20 days, yeah. 20 days, 20 days because of the compounding effect. Guys, I'm going to have to dash now because time is just upon us. Steve, it's been a pleasure talking to you. To you. This fun. has been a great interview, Steve, and I thank you so much for your time today. Where can people get hold of you, Steve? Um, I suppose uh, I could post my, uh, my email. I'm just writing it out. If I spelt it correctly, no, I haven't. Got the dot. There you go. Take a screenshot. You, you dropped it in. Where, where, have you, where have you put it? Have you written it on the piece of paper? No, I've written it on the screen. Oh, oh written on the screen. I can't see it. What, uh, what, what, what is it? Tell, tell me. Okay, one minute. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Coming through. It's coming. Okay, Steve, it's coming through. Let me just use the technology to get your email address up because I think this is so powerful today that people need to have a conversation with you. They need to talk to you. They need to make sure that in 2022, they are doing something that they've never done before. And all that is, is just being consistent. Yeah, just being consistent, you know, is, is, is enough. What'd you say? There it is across the screen. Yes. Oh, that's clever. There it is across the screen, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. I hope you press the replay. I hope you've gone to the message talk show.com and subscribe so you can get the updates. Thank you very much for tuning into the show today. And we're going to say goodbye to you. And Steve Jenkins is, is, is going to be on his email. He's going to be he wants to talk to you. He wants to talk to you because he's not finished yet. He's got so much stuff he wants to talk about. Am I right, <laughs> Am I right Steve? You've got so much stuff you want to talk about all the time. Well, it's 30 plus years of experience inside me and uh, it keeps coming in. 30 plus years of experience and it keeps coming out. Do you, do you know, it, 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 we, we sometimes take for granted the information that we bring to the market and that we have. And after a while, we think it's, we think that everybody knows what I know. Mm. But Steve, today, everybody know, everybody doesn't know what you know. Well, we all, we all don't know what we don't know. You know, we, there's just unlimited, infinite amount of information out there, which we have nobody's, the human race has only cracked 5% of knowledge that Woo. is available. You know, we've got a long way to go. Okay, thank you guys for tuning in.
can't miss the show. You've got to be on this show.